Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to Oracle Open World 2015. This is theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. My co-host for this segment is Brian Gracely. We are in the home stretch. One of those expansive coverages uh, we've done in any show. Lots of interviews, uh, talking to Oracle people, talking to practitioners, and, and talking to the ecosystem. Happy to bring back onto the program Rob Cummins with Tagile Systems, the VP of Marketing. Rob, welcome back to the program. Hey now, how you doing, Stu? All right, hey now. That's uh, right. So, so Rob, you know, we were talking, it's interesting, where we're located here in the booths around us, there's been like a hundred billion dollars worth of storage acquisitions oh, in the last couple of weeks. I mean, right. you know, we, we always say in IT, it's almost uh, try to say that, you know, the only thing constant is change, but I mean, things are changing big time. You've been around uh, the storage industry for, for a little bit now. Yep. Uh, you know, what, what's your take on all the, the craziness? Yeah, I've been doing storage since 1984 when Steve Jobs came out with the first Macintosh. It didn't have a hard drive in it. My friends and I thought that was a little crazy, so that's how I got in this business. I've been in it ever since, and I'll tell you, like you said, it's as, it's as crazy as it's ever been in terms of acquisitions or just the, the flash industry as a whole is just throwing Moore's Law right out the window. The, the capacity gains and the performance gains we're seeing out of flash is fully transformational. Amazing. All right, so uh, you know, I, I saw an article on the Tejal site. You know, some of those winds of change sometimes tend to be opportunities for some of the small guys. So, yep. not to say that you guys are super small, but you, you've been around. Yep. Uh, you've got got some pieces going on there. So, you know, what, what does all this mean to Tejal? Yeah, so this is actually a really good time to be an upstart in this market because there's so many moving parts between the massive acquisitions we've seen, both on the, I'll call it the supply side, as well as the system side. That, that makes holes for guys like us to go plug and fill for other, other uh, firms to pick up. So, you know, just super happy to be in, in this spot right now in the market, the way it's changing. All right, can, can, can you give us kind of, you know, what, what's the latest with Tejal? Any specific Oracle news that you guys have this week or that solution set and uh, any other kind of updates you want to give sure. us on the company? Yeah. yeah, we've got lots to talk about with Oracle customers and users in our booth and we're actually got our, our, our solutions architects, they're actually inviting customers to bring in what they call their automatic uh, repository, performance repositories, where we can actually assess database performance right here in the booth and make recommendations. And we've been known to be a, a, an all flash and a hybrid company, but we're changing the rules in hybrid. Whereas the last few years, we've actually been in the market for about five years, and we've used solid state disk as a performance layer and a spinning disk as a capacity layer to break that tension between capacity and performance. Now we're pulling that disk out and putting very, very high density flash in what I like to call now a multi-tier flash system so we can get actually 10 times faster than what I'll call, it's amazing, it's going to call it a, a traditional all flash array already, you know, 10 <laughs> times faster than that and a third of the cost. So breaking the rules once again. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of stuff go on, even just in the last few years in storage, right? Uh, automatic tiering, we've yep. seen a mix of you know, flash and disk, we've seen some folks say we're going to the all flash data center. What do you hear from customers? I mean, they don't love a million, they like choice, but when they've right. got to decide on choice, it's uh, well, which one should I use, am I getting right. a good deal? What do you hear from them? How well are they understanding this transition, you know, hybrids and all flash and everything in between? Yep. Yeah, so we're very unique in which we offer both. And you no know other upstart offers both all flash and hybrid. So it allows us to enter the discussion, let's get you to an all flash data center. But if the economics, they're just their raw budget, or the um, application they're using, doesn't, it's not that close to the income statement, like Rob's PowerPoint file doesn't really need to be on all flash, we can come down and offer a hybrid. Or we'll put an all flash array in the production database environment, well, what are your DBAs doing for test dev? Do you really want to pay for all flash there? No, let's put a hybrid system there. Or DR, what do you do with DR? I'll put a hybrid system as a second tier in a colo offset to offset the cost of that all flash array in production. Right, we, we, you know, essentially here at Oracle Open World, database performance is key, that's Absolutely. sort of king. Uh, and then we've got things like archival, we've got other tiers. How do, you, how do you think about sort of the premium sometimes you pay that people now go, okay, that's going to drive business agility versus yep. what I pay for keeping data and, and wanting right. to keep data. Yep. Give us a sense of numbers there if you can. Yeah, we've got some customers, I'll give you a great, great story. We've got a hedge fund customer 
that was running their analytics on what happened on the New York Stock Exchange during the day, and they were running their analytics job, and it was taking them 22 hours to do that. So they were literally running a day late and a billion dollars short running on traditional storage. We came in and took that 22 hours and shrunk it down to four hours. So they were able to get that much smarter, that, that much faster for the next day's open. And that translates us to billions of dollars for them. So when I come in and say, hey, here's a $200,000 array, he goes, I'll take five. That's easy. Now, down in you know, the non-production environments, that's where you get a little tougher discussion about the economics. But having that alternative where you can get a flash-like performance, let's say 90, 95% of the time, but a third of the cost of all flash, that that's becomes a very, what I'll call, disarming discussion. Yeah, yeah. More and more we're seeing simpler flash systems. They're easier to manage, simpler to set yep. up. You know, a lot of times it used to be, well, if I can take, if I can take that burden off of storage, I mean, they can go work on other things. Right. What are you seeing them work on? Are they, are they doing analytics around what's going on? Are they taking on new projects? Any sense of where that time now goes for a storage admin? Yeah, it's typically moving away from managing performance. We've got a customer, he spent 60% of his time managing storage performance on old traditional storage. Now he spends less than a minute. He's got a dashboard up in his knock. He just looks up, performance is in check, capacity reduction is in check. He just looks at it as he's passing the, uh, the, the screen. So he's able to reallocate his time to optimizing other portions of the stack. Gotcha. Yeah, so Rob, you talk about stack. Yeah. Here at the Oracle show, yep. uh, I mean, there's the red stack. I mean, Oracle right. came out here, updates to the uh, you know exadata, talking about you know putting things to, down to the silicon and how software and that go together, yep. and everything down from the hardware all the way up through the application. Right. Well, you know, we we, we Wikibon have been talking a lot about converged and systems, and right. even when you talk about cloud, it's you know I want customers have said they want a similar architecture kind of here and there. What does systems mean to Tejal? You know, how, how do you guys play? I mean. You, you guys have a storage piece, but how much of your business is sold in kind of you know fully baked solution stacks yep. and the like? We are actually partnered with Cisco in building what we call IntelliStack, and that's a converged system that's built for things like Oracle, virtualization, VDI, and what they are, they're proven out, well-known, I like to call small, medium, and large configurations that we understand, Cisco understands, Oracle understands. We all have support agreements with each other, so we're all known entities. And it makes it very, very simple for customers as well as our resellers to uh, specify, configure, and order. That entire stack of IT is orderable in a single line item. So you just boom, you know, it's very easy to uh, cut a PO for a single system and have confidence that you've got a, a well operating stack. So are, are those stacks, are they a meaningful part of Tejal's business today? Any metrics or kind of momentum that you can yeah, share? I'd say a good probably 20, 30% of our business is built as that fixed stack. But lots of our customers use that stack as a reference architecture and maybe they'll put a little English on the ball based on their specific requirements. So it's used in a lot of our business, whether it be buying, buying the stack or leveraging the stack as a, yeah. a reference architecture. So what about service providers, cloud providers? Yeah. Uh, what, what are you hearing from customers and what, what's the Tejal story uh, for cloud? Yeah, because again we have both all flash and hybrid, we're able to hit a wide range of price performance points that cloud providers love. You can have a platinum, gold, silver, bronze on our systems that have maybe 100%, 20%, 10%, 5% of the total capacity in flash. And then they leverage deduplication to further, and compression, to further drop their cost of goods sold. So it goes right to their gross margin line or lets them get more aggressive in pricing against their, their competition. So they love what's going on with Flash and some of the software value add we bring. Yeah, this audience, it, because they're running mission critical applications, maybe not the most uh, wanting to move fast. They want to make you know, conservative decisions. They don't want to make mistakes. Right. How much does it help you that now Oracle is saying, all these databases should run on all Flash. We're comfortable with Flash. Dave Donatelli was talking about we've got an industry shift. How much does that help you not have to convince the application guys that uh, this might be this might be shaky? Yeah, yeah. When, it, when we first moved into the flash type market about five, six years ago, everyone was afraid of endurance and things like that. That's pretty much gone away. So when we've got the big, what I like to call oligarchs saying, yep, going all flash is okay, but we have a superior solution, 
I love them blazing the trail for us. It's fantastic. I don't have to come in and fight the good fight for Flash first. Yeah, marketing guy, that's got to save you a bunch of money in terms of having to define performance or what it really means. Yeah, I, I, I'll, take, I'll take Oracle and HP's Flash marketing all day long. It, it offsets my, my uh, meager marketing budget that I work with as an upstart. Yeah. I love it. So thanks, big guys. <laughs> so, one of the other big things that we beginning to be talked about more and more is in-memory databases, sure. in-memory. What does that mean to, to the storage arrays? Because you know now my, my reads and writes, or a lot of it is done in memory. What, what is, what's the role of, a, of an array now in, a, in yep. memory environment? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, a few things. There's resiliency. If you have an in-memory database and that server goes down, your data's gone as well. That's, of course, very, very risky. You've got can you maintain performance integrity if the size of that database breaches the, uh, the memory footprint? So having high performance storage underneath that is still absolutely crucial. So while we see some of the data moving up to in memory, we're still seeing a lot of people, you know, how do I protect this? How do I move it? I've got VMs and I'm trying to bounce between production and test and dev and things like that. So it's still a huge opportunity for both in memory as well as shared storage in today's environment. Yeah. All right, so Rob, not sure how much you've had a chance to kind of check out the show, talk to customers. Any, any key things that you've heard so far, or customer stories you want to share? Uh, I, think we, I think you hit that nail on the head, Brian, when you said that customers have, have made that mental leap that they've got to figure out how to go to a flash-based data center. It's how do you do it most economically as well as maintain that rich set of data services that they've been used to with 20, 30-year-old traditional storage um, systems over the, over the years. So being able to offer a very rich set of data management tools and have a blend of hybrid and flash gives them that flexibility of choice based on how aggressive they want to get into this right now or over the next few years. So yes. we're very excited yeah. about the, the tone here at the show. So, one of the biggest challenges we've seen in the storage industry, David Floyer, our CTO at Wikibon, talked about quite a bit, is migration costs. Yeah. You know, it's so tough, you know, standing it up, you know, moving stuff over when I've got updates and things like that. You know, have we solved this problem yet? How, how does Tejal look at you know, that, that whole challenge? Yeah, I, as our customers get more and more virtualized, it becomes easier and easier because we can use the, the hypervisors or, you know, the um, Oracle virtualization platform to move things a lot more gracefully. I call it changing your tire while you're still driving the car. You know, 10 years ago, that was extremely complex, and that, that professional service engagement would take months and maybe cost as much, if not more, than the array itself. Now those barriers to, to move data are a lot easier, and again, as an upstart, it makes it a lot easier for us to get into an environment because we can, you know, don't tell the professional services engineers I said this, but you can almost drag and drop that, that, that tire in the car while you're still driving. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, it, it almost makes it a little bit easy to migrate. So yeah. Solutions aren't as sticky as they are before. That's right. You know, how, what, what do you see out there? I mean, customers tended to be like, well, you know, these are the servers I bought, these are the storage I bought, I have my refresh cycles. I, I mean, convergences change things, yep. clouds change things, and you know, boy, it, 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 as we said at the beginning of the thing, it just yeah. changes happening a lot faster. Yeah. Where, what's the customer's mindset when it comes to storage today? I think it's right now, it's figuring out how to most cost effectively and aggressively get into Flash, knowing that you've got these opposing forces between in-memory databases and clouds, on-prem, off-prem, security, performance integrity and control, lots of different moving forces. So you know, every, every one of those components has a place in the enterprise, it's figuring out how to essentially put those parts in the right order at the right scale for their environment. And it's funny, every, every environment's a little bit different, be, be it the technology or the politics and the co company culture makes every, every different engagement a completely new experience for us. Yeah, we, we talk a lot, the application teams don't really want to care about infrastructure, probably not the thing to spend their time on. But do you ever find that as you go into an account, you're working with a customer, that first couple applications all of a sudden got a lot faster? Do you find they end up becoming your evangelist to go, hey, we, we want whatever the heck they've got under the covers? Right. Back in the day when we're just shifting from, let's say, a 10,000 RPM drive to 15,000 RPM drive, it's kind of a ho-hum. The, the, the application guys would tell the storage guys, go back in the boiler room, I don't care. But now you you know you got 10x, 100x improvements in performance. We're, storage is kind of cool again, and it's you know the app guys are understanding, appreciating the material impact that Flash can have, and they're like, gimme, 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 gimme. So we are getting that pulling effect 
from the application guys, even the DBAs, whereas before it was, ah, go back to the boiler room. Yeah. Some, some of the storage companies, especially the all-flash ones, have, have had some campaigns that say, well, your, your, your applications will run faster, less I.O., faster I.O., potentially reduces some of your licensing from an Oracle perspective. Yeah. Are you seeing that in reality with, for your customers? Yeah, and actually what triggered it was actually um, Mr. Floyer's report talking about licensing costs. We Our, our sales teams use that report almost daily, and we, I've got one particular instance. I was involved in a sales campaign. A customer bought a $100,000 all-flash array from us, and it moved away $300,000 of licensing costs, so 3x pay, you know, payback in less than 90 days. You know, I, I, that was a really fun phone call to take. So we, we see it all the time. Yeah, no, that's great. And we, we love to provide that perspective for, for end users to be able to help them you know, run their IT better. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so the other big cost savings when it comes to storage, of course, it, it's not just the capital, it's the operational uh, piece of it. You know, what do you see in your customer base when, when you put your environment in? You know, have you guys been able to measure or you know, what changes are made, oh, kind yeah. of who manages it, how, how that whole works? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll give you the, the easiest little metaphor I love to use is that high density flash system we're using. It's got a 3U chassis that has a half a petabyte of capacity raw. And that thing pulls less, less power than my, my, my wife's hair dryer. I mean, it's, it's so easy when you just put it that way. And, you know, it's an order of magnitude drop in both space. I mean, how with disk, how, how much would a half a petabyte take? Racks and racks and racks of gear. Now I can do that in 3U, and that's raw. If I can get a three, uh, three to one data reduction rate, you know, I've, got, I've got tons and tons of capacity in a single 3U package, it's fantastic. So space, power, cooling, the whole, the whole kit and caboodles. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, if you look, you know, the poor storage people used to have all those geek knobs that they had to do. Oh, yeah. They, they had to manually do things. Tiering, uh, we talked about, used to be, oh, I, I need to do that, or I need to kind of care and feed it now. Yep. You know, how, 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 if you went to the average person that has a Tejal box, do they know where the box is? You know, are they touching it pretty regularly? Or, you know, what, what, what do you find? They probably don't physically know where it is. It's yeah. just, it just happens. And like I said, we, our customers, we ask them, about, do you use the reporting a lot? They go, no, it just works. This is fantastic. I don't have to worry about storage anymore. It's a huge, huge management and operational difference that way as well. And just the orchestration we've done with um, Oracle and Cisco and the stack we talked about, it makes the, the, the entire um, data center easier to manage because you're not wrestling with storage performance anymore. Okay, so Rob, I want to give you the last word. You know, what, what, what would you say are kind of the top couple of reasons why you know customers are calling up Tejal? The kind of the big business challenge that you're helping to solve. Sure thing. So I like to call Tejal's flash storage, be it flash or hybrid, the best storage platform for the indecisive IT manager. And the reason I say that is we've got lots of flexibility of choice in our offering, be it all flash or hybrid. We're also one of the only upstarts that does both block and file, so you can get at the system concurrently over a whole set of protocols. And you know, you might you might know what's going on in 90 days in your IT shop. Do you know what's going on over that full three or five year service life? Probably not. So if you if you want to dial up or dial down the amount of flash you've got in your data center based on performance versus economics, or you know, let's say the the VMware guys are come rolling through with some NFS and you're running a fiber channel today, that's perfectly okay. So if you if you want something that's super flexible, it can change with you over time, we're the guys to call. Uh, I, I like that. So, so often flexibility and simplicity uh, were kind of opposite ends of the right. spectrums. Uh, great to see IT solutions that are pulling those both back together. Absolutely. All right. Well, Rob Cummins uh, with Tejal Systems, always great to catch up with you. We'll be right back with lots more coverage here from Oracle Open World 2015. This is theCUBE, thanks for watching.